Out of these four different challenges, we are going to focus on the first two items. So we're going to figure out how to write efficient queries and how to generally design the schema or structure of our database. Let's get started on these first two items right away. So for our first little project that we're going to work on, our first example of working with Postgres, we are going to figure out how to store a list of large cities inside of a database. The source of data that we're going to use is a page on wikipedia.org. So inside of a new browser tab, I'm going to navigate to this link right away. All right, so here is a Wikipedia page that has a list of large cities in the world. I'm going to scroll down on this page a little bit and eventually get to this table right here. Now this table has many different columns inside of it, but there are only four columns that I really want to care about for this first exercise. You'll notice that this table has columns of city, country, and then the last two over here are the population and the area and the urban area around the city. So four columns in total that we really care about, city, country, population, and area. Let's go through the entire process of setting up a database to store a list of cities with these four different pieces of information about each individual city. Now to understand how we're going to design and set up our database to do this, we're going to go through a little design process that we're going to repeat many times inside this course. We're going to ask ourselves three different questions and use the answers to each of these questions to set up our database. The first thing we're going to ask ourselves is, what kind of thing are we storing? We're then going to ask ourselves what properties this thing has. And then finally, what type of data each of those properties refer to or contains. So in this case, for a list of cities, we can answer each of these questions pretty easily. So first, what kind of thing are we storing? Well, we're storing a list of cities. What properties do these cities have? Well, each one has a name, a country, a population, and an area. And then finally, the type of data for each of those individual properties, the name and the country, are probably going to be strings of characters. And the population and area are probably going to be numbers. So for this first example, answering these three questions ends up being pretty easy and straightforward. We're then going to take each of these three questions, or these three answers right here, and use them to actually set up our database. So here's what we are going to do with these three answers. So the answer to the first question right here, we said that we're going to store a list of cities. So we're going to create something inside of our database called a table, and we're going to give this table a name of cities. Let's talk about what a table is very quickly. A table is something that sits inside of our database that is going to store a collection of records that all have some kind of related meaning. In our case, we're going to make a table called cities. And then inside of that table, we're eventually going to store all the different cities that you saw on that Wikipedia page. So a table contains many records. We are only ever going to store data inside of our database inside of tables. So it's very important for us to really think about how to properly generate, name, and design the different tables inside of our database. Then from this second answer, we're going to take the different properties that each of these cities have and use them to create columns inside of our table. So in our case, we're going to make sure that our cities table has columns of name, country, population, and area. And so if we visualize what that looks like, it'd be something like this right here. So inside of a table, we have many different columns, and each column is going to store some information about a very specific property of some record. Because we want to store the name, country, population, and area for each city, we make four columns, one for each of those different properties. And then finally, we say that each of those different columns are going to store a very different specific kind or type of information. So name and country are going to store strings, and population and area are going to store numbers. We'll see where we are going to use that information in just a moment. Once we set up this table and the four columns inside of it, we can then start to add data into the table itself. So eventually, we will add in some list of cities, such as Tokyo, Delhi, Shanghai, and so on. Each of these cities will have a name, country, population, and area. Each of these individual cities that we add into this table, we refer to as rows. So right now, cities has three rows. One row is Tokyo, one is Delhi, one is Shanghai. All right, so that's a little bit of the basics of database terminology. We have tables. Tables have many columns that store information about different properties. And each record inside of a table is referred to as a row. 
Now that we've got a little bit of database terminology put together, and we've got an idea of how to design this city's table, let's start to actually build this thing out in the next video.